Good morning, good children of God. Welcome as we join together this Sunday to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we come together on this beautiful day, um, I would ask you please take a look at some of the announcements in the bulletin. Um, first off, next Saturday, did you want me to say that or are you going to talk about it? Okay, I'll let you talk about it, Carl. I hate to take away your thunder. Um, <clears throat> you'll notice that uh, it's a little bit far out, but on uh, July 9th, we'll be having a family fun day um, following worship that morning. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, you want to come right here? I'd like to introduce to you my grandson, mentioned at one time uh, in my first congregation that there was probably at least part of a service that I did with each one of my children in my arms at times, um, as oftentimes uh, Dina with four young younglings, one of them would get away, um, get loose, and would crawl up front, and I would just pick them up and start, just keep right on going like nothing had ever happened, and um, so I think that's why Derek sings like he does today, because the first time that happened, it was Derek, and it was during the liturgy, and I picked him up during one of the, the hymns of the liturgy, and I'm holding him, and he's just looking at me. <laughs> so, um, I won't take credit for his voice all the way, but uh, his love of singing certainly comes from the church. Uh, so it's, uh, and if Joseph makes noise, he makes noise, <laughs> right? Um, so... Uh, he's been uh, fun this weekend. Took him a little bit to get acclimated to the house. A little strange surroundings, but once he got acclimated, he's been uh, just having a fun time. How are you? How are you? <laughs> oh, by the way, Joseph brought his parents. Um, <laughs> my daughter, December, uh, son-in-law, and Jonathan. Um, so we're, uh, we're happy to have them with us this weekend as well. Um... Anyways, the family fun day is, is July 9th following worship that morning. We're, we are going to have ice cream because there's nothing better for brunch in July than ice cream, right? Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> Carl, did you want to say a couple things? Well, you want to carry me through the sanctuary? Everybody's going, are you right? <laughs>
Saturday is our cleanup day. So anyone that would like to come and assist us, we're more than welcome. Um, we, will, we will have a lunch provided. I don't know what it is yet because I am not a high enough pay grade to know what that is. <laughs> the other thing uh, that we want to mention is after the service today, there is going to be the plant sale out in the garage. You're more than welcome to cruise through there. It's uh, been going fairly well from what I'm told. So they've got quite a bit left, but they've sold quite a bit also. The other thing I want to mention, if you haven't noticed, is there is a new roof on the parsonage. And I would greatly thank the Sobeck family for the patience that they have shown for us to get that done. Thank you. We really didn't have to do much in terms of patience, except for the one morning they said they'll be there. You may want to make sure there's no cars in the driveway. And when I opened the garage door up, there was a dumpster in front of the car. So I'm like, well, honey, guess what? I guess I'll be taking you to work in the truck which was parked up in the church parking lot. So, but in one day's time, they had the roof done. And then the next day they came back and did the gutters <laughs> in the rain. Um, they had quite a crew there the first day to take care of the, the roofing part. And two, day, two guys came back the next day and, and I think it actually lightened at some point. And I did make comment to them, please don't get struck by lightning. It would look really bad if you're working in the church parsonage and get struck by lightning. Um, so, but uh, we thank the trustees for that. And actually, the, the color that was picked out, Dina thought would be darker than it is. It's kind of a brown now, but it actually probably looks a little nicer than it would have looked if it had been darker. So uh, we're very thankful for the trustees for that work, and that went pretty quick when they got it started on it. So are there any other announcements this morning? Next Sunday is the last Sunday for Sunday School. Um, they will be having, donuts. they're doing donuts, Lots of games and maybe a goat. Maybe a goat? Yeah. We're not going to sacrifice the goat, are we? Oh, a petting zoo. Is Bill available? Justin, is Bill available? Maybe you can bring Bill in for the event. Or you can bring Katie in, whatever. Uh, oh. <sighs> Would you please stand and join me in our call to worship? This is the good news which we proclaim to you. Walk in the light of his love. Come, let us worship the one who overcame death. Let us celebrate the triumph of our Lord. Amen.
please be seated. As we come to a time of prayer this morning, I would ask your prayers for my father. Um, Mom and dad were here yesterday morning for the plant sale and bought some plants. And by three o'clock yesterday afternoon, my dad was in the ER at St. Mary's. Um, he is uh, very dizzy at this point. They think he perhaps may have had a TIA. Um, they're not certain on that, but um, please keep mom and dad in your prayers. Um, mom said they got to the ER about three yesterday afternoon and didn't get actually a bed until 11 o'clock last night. Uh, the ER was quite busy, um, unfortunately, with, uh, with emergencies, obviously. Um, so um, please keep mom and dad uh, in your prayers. Um, it was kind of funny because um, they showed up. I had to go down yesterday morning to do a blessing of the motorcycles uh, for the fire department, um, a blessing of the bikes. And uh, so I rode my, my hog, uh, my bike up the grass, up to the parking lot, and down and talked to mom and dad for a few moments and said, I'll be back in a little bit, and left. And Donna Crossman said, how do you know Pastor Dave? Because she didn't realize it was my parents. And they're like, well, he's our son. <laughs> so, um, but uh, <clears throat> they were here yesterday and had a chance to uh, chat with Joseph a bit and uh, December and Jonathan and, and had a, a wonderful time yesterday here. But uh, please keep them in your prayers. Um, also, please keep in your prayers the folks down in Texas, as there was another shooting yesterday at a mall, I believe I saw someplace at least eight um, were killed and a number of injured. Um, I'm not up here to speak about the 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 about gun control or if there's a need for gun control, but it's obviously there's a need for um, help in our country when people feel the need to have to do these kind of violent things. Um, it's not just with guns, it's with any type of, of weapons. Um, and there's obviously a, a need, a bigger need, for the church and for people of love um, to show folks love instead of anger and to show better ways to express their displeasure or anger than through violent means. Um, so please keep those folks uh, in your prayers as well as those around the nation who've been affected already this year um, through violence. Are there any other prayer concerns or joys this morning? So Faye and Bill, with can both with cancer. Any other, I would uh, lift up prayers for you for um, in a couple weeks, our um, confirmation. Students uh, will be confirming their faith. There'll be seven from the class and three extras um, who will be, uh, uh, we've got the, the Wolene girls were not able to do their, their confirmation Sunday because they got quarantined that week before and just haven't gotten back to doing it. So. I'll actually, all three of the Willing kids. Um, I think Mia wanted that way because it'd be cheaper to have a party that way. Um, but uh, uh, the three of them, as well as uh, Brock Levesque, um, I should say nine will be confirmed, and Peyton Porter will be baptized into the faith as Peyton was not baptized as a child. Um, well, I realize she's still a child. Right, Peyton? Yeah. Um, but uh, she will be uh, baptized into the faith on that Sunday morning. So that's two weeks from today. So please uh, keep those folks in your prayers as they go through their last couple of weeks with me. Um, also, the three young men from our congregation who will graduate from high school a month from today. Um, Colton Brandle, who's already graduated, correct? He kind of, he's not in school anymore. Um, Mason Levesque and... Kevin Williams will all graduate this year from 
home of the Elkats. Um, so uh, please keep them in your prayers as they come to the end of their high school journey and move on. I do not know where Kevin is going on to school, if he is. I'm sure he is. Um, but I know that Brock is going to um, St. Norbert's, not Brock, Mason is going to St. Norbert's College. Uh, now, of course, the joke I told last night was apparently he wanted to get away from as far away from professional football as he could. Well, that livens them up, doesn't it, in the Packer country? You know, I used to say that in Minnesota when some kid was going to the U of M. I, said, I used to say that about them going to, the, to uh, you know, Minneapolis to get away from professional football, which all of you would laugh then, right? Um, and they were all like, ay, 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 ay. So, but, uh, so please keep Mason in your prayers as he heads to Green Bay this fall. Would you please join me in a word of prayer? Lord, as we step into your presence this day, we would ask that your blessings of love and grace be found within our world. That people would find a way to settle differences in nonviolent means. If they are angry, to find ways to express that anger rather than having to lash out. We pray, Lord, for a world that seems at times out of control and filled with nothing but anger and malice. We pray, Lord, that you would make us harbingers of peace and of grace and of your love. We pray, Lord, for those of our friends we know that are uh, experiencing life-changing events in the next few weeks, especially our young people. We thank you, Lord, for uh, the grace you have given to them at, to this point in their lives and that you will continue to bless them in the days ahead as they continue their journey of faith. We ask, Lord, your blessings upon those who need your healing, especially your touch. We would ask, Lord, your presence with us today, that we might know and do your will in the world that we live in, the world you have created and given to us as a blessing. Be with us today, strengthen us, lead us. Amen. Our lessons this morning are supposed to have been read by the uh, one of the discipleship students, but um, when I asked them on Wednesday night, there was a mix-up as the date, so I told them that they were supposed to read on Confirmation Sunday, so that's what they prepared for, and then I found out Friday that they were supposed to read this Sunday. And neither one of them were going to be here today, so I get to read. Our first lesson comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, the first 17 verses of the letter. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel concerning his son, who is descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace an apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all God's beloved in Rome who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is proclaimed throughout the world. For God, whom I serve with my spirit by announcing the gospel of his Son, is my witness that without ceasing I remember you always in my prayers, asking that by God's will I may somehow at, least, at last succeed in coming to you. For I am longing to see you, so that I may share with you some spiritual gift to strengthen you, or rather, so that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that I have often intended to come to you, 
but thus far have been prevented, in order that I may reap some harvest among you, as I have among the rest of the Gentiles. I am a debtor both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to wise and to the foolish. Hence my eagerness to proclaim the gospel to you also who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed through faith for faith. As it is written, the one who is righteous will live by faith. And from John's Gospel, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. May we bring to God our morning tithes and offerings. <laughs>
Lord, we thank you for the springtime of this year, for the trees budding out, for the flowers beginning to come, for the world coming back to life. We thank you, Lord, for the life that you have given to each of us, a life which we may use for ourselves as well as in your service in this world. May you take these gifts, Lord, the work of our hands, and use them as you use us, the fruit of the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in our community and in our world. Amen. Please be seated. Any of you know Greek? If you look at uh, the title in your bulletin, you'll see that that is actually Greek, the word there. And just uh, before you think that I'm so, so um, advanced that I can type in Greek, I had to cut and paste that from someplace else, right? That is the word euangelion in Greek, which means good messenger good messenger in other words a message that came from someone anyone remember back i think it was uh might have been early 70s the good news from modern man the little bibles that came out at that point they were kind of a more of a of an easier um wording for kids to read especially i remember getting those little paperbacks in in sunday school in DeForest. good news for modern man because back in the early 70s, we were quite modern, right? With avocado green toilets, um, or the, uh, was it the Harvest Gold, um, refrigerators and such things as that. You see those once in a while now and you go, wow. Um, I did have, by the way, the um, um, Jensen's, uh, we talked about, um, we had to replace a toilet downstairs, and I made a comment about getting an avocado green one, and they laughed at me. Then I realized the tiling down there is green. It would have matched. But they told me they couldn't get those anymore. It'd be very difficult to get one. They said they had someone actually call, and hopefully it's nobody here that I'm gonna make fun of, and ask for a pink toilet. Now, does that sound like something one of you would want in your home as a pink toilet? <laughs> Blair's going, why would I want a pink toilet? I don't know. Oh, the Mary Kay people with all the pink? Like, like the whole place been washed in Pepto-Bismol? Yeah, okay. <sighs> but yeah, um, but those were great books because it was in modern, kind of modern English. They, obviously, some of that they take away uh, the language thing that allow pastors to kind of really dig into things a little more, like the word I've given you today, right? That'll be a little more difficult in the in the good news because it's basically a a, a free rephrasing of the regular RSV Bible. It's not a complete retranslation. It is simply a you know making it more streamlined. But good news, so whenever I think of good news, that's what I think about is those little gray Bibles we, we got back then. But good news, as Paul writes it, of course, we, we call the gospel good news, correct? That's the good news we share with people. The thing is, Paul is writing to a Roman people. He's writing to Rome. He's not been there yet. But he's laying the groundwork for what is to come, right? He's sending out a letter to the folks there because there have been some converts there. Some people have been uh, or have moved there, and they're wanting to know more about this Jesus fellow. But the thing is, this word, euangelion, was used by the Roman government. Because whenever the emperor did something, it was called good news. 
So the emperor would send out, like, was, when it's the emperor's birthday, they would send messengers out to announce the good news of the emperor's birthday because everybody is supposed to celebrate the emperor's birthday. Which, unless you had a lot of money, chances are you just did your normal thing. Much like most of us do, right? When we get to be a little older, when our birthdays roll around. Maybe we go to dinner, maybe we... It's just another day, right? It's not like when you're seven or eight and you're excited about becoming that next age and you can't wait. I'm not sure what that point that becomes where we're excited to be the next age or we hold on to the old one as long as we can. Right? If you're 59, you are going to stay 59 until you have to hit 60. Right? But people would go out and do this. So as Paul is writing this, you Evangelion to these folks, they're a little confused because they're used to this word being used by the government, not by someone talking about this. And then Paul says, yet besides, this is really the good news, the other stuff doesn't matter. So for Roman citizens, they're a little confused by this. But Paul says, I am convinced this is the true good news. And what is the good news? Is it new carpeting in the church? Is the good news a new pastor? Is the good news, what is it? Salvation. Salvation is what Paul's talking about. Does that not, sometimes that good news get a little lost within the church? Because we think of other things that are happening, but the true good news, the true nature of the church is to spread the message, the good news, that salvation is ours. That salvation can be ours. Can be ours. I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, salvation is one of those things that is offered to all people. But not everybody accepts it. There is a difference. We all like to think that as Christians we are all part of the heavenly kingdom, but we still have to accept the salvation offered to us. Much like an invitation to a birthday party, you have to accept it to go. You can't be part of the party sitting at home. Well, I shouldn't say that, because the last couple of years we've done Zoom, right? I can imagine anybody having a Zoom birthday party would have been very much a letdown. Would it not? How do you share cake and games and fun and run around like a bunch of chickens with your heads cut off? Do you guys know what that's about? No, the other part. Yes. Yeah. How many of you know what that's like, actually? I've seen there's a few that know what that sounds like. You know, those are, again, one of those phrases that show my age, right? When we're, we talk about those things, and it's like, oh, the kids, it's like talking about VHS tapes. The kids, they're like, what? <laughs> or worse yet, eight-track tapes? A what? But we have a message of salvation. We, you and I, have that message of salvation. In that word, euangelion, there's also the word angel as part of that. Messenger of God. Now I realize we like to refer to people who have passed from this life into the next as angels. But technically speaking, we are all messengers of God. Granted, some may be more eloquent about it, some may be great speakers of that. 
Some may be not afraid to stand up in front of people and express that. But we're all messengers. You know, the years ago they did a study that showed that people were more afraid of speaking, in, some people were more afraid of speaking in public than dying. Which means they'd rather be the person in the casket than the one given the eulogy. And I've had people tell me, oh, I couldn't do what you do. Yeah, you can. I don't know, is there anybody here that doesn't know how to talk? I noticed, I, I'm thankful, none of my discipleship students raised their hands. Because they all know how to talk at the right times, do you not, my children? Right? Ava? Justin? Yeah, smile when he says that back there. Liam? Although Liam is probably the quietest of the, of the bunch at times, but he's a, he's a sneaky one. All right? He's the one that'll say things that kind of interject and you go, what did you say? But we all know how to talk. We all know how to, to tell people things, right? We talk about ourselves, we talk about our, for crying out loud, how long have you been enduring me talking about my grandchild? Five, yeah, five and a half months, right? I've been whining about, how many times have I told you about my orange car? <laughs> what was that? We all know how to talk. We all like to talk about certain things. We like to talk about ourselves. Do you feel saved? Do you understand God's salvation for you that came through Jesus Christ? Does, how does that make you feel? That's all like Dr. Phil, didn't it? How do you feel about that? It's telling people. It's telling people our life story. It's telling people where we have felt the saving grace of Jesus Christ, where we have seen salvation at work in our lives. We've all seen it. We are God's people. Our purpose is to tell the world about salvation. Our purpose is to bring people to know that salvation that we have found in Jesus Christ. It is not done just through the guy standing up front or girl standing up front. It is done through you. You, the people of God, the children of the Creator, are called to be the people who express that. Paul was very eloquent in his writings, was able to, to do a lot of preaching and talking, I'm sure a lot more things than we see in just his letters. The apostles did that. We can do that. To tell people about God's love that comes to us in that salvation. Would you please join me in prayer? Lord, we thank you for this message that you give to us. It does not have to be complicated. It doesn't have to have flowery words does not to have, have to have great theological language. Just seem, it just is, is telling people that we know that Jesus died for us. That God offers us salvation through our Lord and our Savior. Salvation we only need to accept. Lord, we would ask that you would help us feel empowered to go into this world to spread that simple message. To tell those who are hurting that salvation can be theirs. 
to tell people who are in need that salvation can be theirs. To tell the world salvation is available to all of us. For that is the good news we speak of. The salvation of our God. Bless us, Lord, as we go out into your world to spread that message. Amen. Please turn to your service for Holy Communion for the season of Easter as you find in your bulletin. I will note that when we uh, get to the cup, um, we are singing Jesus Makes My Heart Rejoice. And while I am serving the cup, you might not want to leap. Should not I for gladness leap while uh, the cup is being served? If you're sitting down, obviously you can do that, but um, I'll leave it up to you. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Thanks be to God.
this elder dear, who draws the heart glorious head to your disciples now appear as risen from the dead. Let our rejoicing souls in you the tokens of your passion view and hear your gentle voice anew say peace be unto you lord we thank you this day that we can come to this table as brothers and sisters in christ with varied backgrounds and experiences in life and yet lord we have one purpose to come together as one heart one voice to love our savior and to do his work in our world we ask lord your blessings upon us as we gather together around this table to know you in the breaking of the bread and drinking of the cup bless us lord this day as we come together and bless us as we pray the words you taught us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen our lord jesus christ on the night he's betrayed took bread when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
our Lord Jesus Christ said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. By your divine presence, by the holy sacraments, by all the merits of your life, sufferings, death, and resurrection, bless and comfort us, gracious Lord and God. Amen. In the same way, after supper, our Lord Jesus Christ took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me.
our Lord Jesus Christ said, drink from this, all of you. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ, the Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. And now whenever you eat this bread or drink this cup, you proclaim Christ's death. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give unto you his peace. In the name of Jesus, amen.